my red wine playlist. Hello everybody, welcome to Ball with Bill here and uh, I've got a great coach out here with me but I want to first of all thank Sideline Power and Sports Boards for being sponsors of Ball with Bill and then I want to welcome a uh, state champion coach from Bennington High School, Coach Lenhart. How are you today? I'm good, how are you? Did I say that right? You did it perfect. Perfect, good deal, good deal. Well, I watched you play when you were done so you're quite a good football player back those days. Well, thank you. And uh, it's an honor to have you on today. I appreciate um, it. And be part of the Ball with Bill so appreciate you taking thank time you. out of your busy schedule. Course. Good deal. Um, coming off the state championship last year, yeah. uh, tell us about it. Tell us the excitement because it was Bennington's first one, right? Ever? Uh, no, they won one in 1989. So okay. first in 32 years. Wow. Yeah. So we'll, I mean, what was that class C probably back then too? C, what? yep, C1. C1. Yep. Well, you know, because it was kind of a fun year. I mean, you guys were on a roll and you play a great schedule, a lot of good teams. So kind of tell us a little bit about it. Yeah, uh, just from the get-go, we knew coming in we had a, a phenomenal team. Uh, we, I didn't know we had that good, though. Uh, we knew we had a strength in our offensive line. We returned four of the five starters, and the, the fifth one ended up being a senior who had contributed on both sides, so that was huge. Uh, you know, and, of course, Dylan, uh, once again, we knew he was going to be good, but not 3,000-yard good, and, and that was phenomenal. Um, and we had a lot of things that just – Really went well first of the year. Um, stayed healthy, which is the key, I think, in a lot of situations for a lot of teams. That was big for us. Um, but had players on both sides of the ball contributed, and like I said, just made it for a really, really fun year. So talk about, uh, you know, how you built this winning culture. Because, I mean, it, you've been progressing each year, and it's it seems like now it's just, you know, you're, people consider you a Class A type school. I mean, being honest with you, you talk to other coaches in the area. Well, I first of all, we're fortunate enough in Bankton that we have a lot of great kids who want to do well. Um, I would by no means say that I built it. When I got here with under Coach Bowen, they had really laid the groundwork and really started buying into a culture and what, what was set. And So when I took over, we just took the things that I had known worked well for us from my previous school and blended it with his, and that's where we're at. Um, but that you can see when uh, I was an assistant for Coach Bowen, we went 7-4, and four, uh, lost twice to Omaha Scott, Waverly. Um, so we lost it. In the, Quality the, people. Yeah, yeah. Scott was state champs that year. Waverly was semifinals. Those were, I mean, great teams. So it's been building. Uh, but uh, the kids – they buy in. That's that's the most phenomenal part about being here. We have kids that want to do well. Um, and, you know, a lot of kids want to be part of it, too. So we get over 100, 120 kids on a football roster. That allows us, like we did last year, to go one way for a lot of players. Get a lot more kids' that's experience. Big. It's huge. Um, you know, we'll see what it happens because I know in a couple of years we're going to be Class A. And so we're hoping this just helps us build and gets us prepared for when that time comes. Okay. Um, question for you. Now that you've had all this success that you've had, um, what do you do to continue it and, and keep it going right now? Because right now, you know, and you got new kids coming up. I know you got JV freshman programs yeah. and stuff like that. But talk a little bit how you keep the people so they don't go overboard. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Because you can sometimes believe your press, and then all of a sudden you think you're better than you are, and then yep. you can get tagged. So what do you do to keep them kind of level level-headed and grounded? Well, I, you know, we talked about actually this week in the weight room, um, you know, nothing is given to us. The, the most fun I've had this summer so far is we got brand-new kids who have to just – step up it's their time to step up and um you think that we really preach on is we're not going to try to 
um, do anything special. We're just trying to do the ordinary things better than our opponents. Everyone's lifting weights this summer. Everyone's doing 707. We have to figure out what are we going to do that's going to be better than them. Um, yeah. And so that's where, we, that's where we're at right now. Uh, I think having success definitely helps on it. We have a lot of kids coming back who were part of that, who contributed a lot. They know what it takes to get there. Um, now it's getting them to lead the, the new ones. Uh, we're going to see a lot of new faces on the field next year, a lot of young kids. Mm -hmm. uh, but I'm excited about it. It's just going to be tremendous that those seniors um, who played significant roles last year take on the leadership role, and that's, where I, that's what we need to build on. Okay. Well, you, now that you've been a head coach at two places, mm -hmm. as you develop, things change, of course, yeah. in football. What, is your, what are your offense and defensive philosophies as a whole? Because I know you kind of help with both groups. Yeah, yeah. Uh, offensively, uh, Coach Bird, um, who is our offensive coordinator, he does a tremendous job. And so he does a lot of just reading and um, – a lot of times he talks about we just we got to find the one spot where we can take advantage of, um, and I think he does a tremendous job at that. And the, what he kind of instills and buys in is that everyone has a chance to get the ball, and, and if you do it right, you got a chance to score every time. And thank gosh we've we've been able to see that the last two years. Our offense has been tremendous, um, the highest it's been around um, Bankton in a while. Keep looking at previous stats, I don't know all of them, but um, and that, when you have that success, kids want to buy into it more. Uh, defensively, it's been a big change for me. Uh, when I was in Fairbury, we were a three front, three, ran a three five. Uh, when I got here, I was uh, working with Coach Richling, who was our defensive coordinator the past three years. He was a four front guy um, and started just to learn the ins and outs of it. And when I took over, we kind of combined ideas that I liked from the three front with what he does with the four front. We kind of have what we now do, and I love it. Um, I, the three front is, I think, a very popular defense right now. A lot of teams run it. So I'm actually enjoying that we have a four front because it's just a little bit different. Uh, now we're fortunate enough, too, we have guys that can run it. I think it's all – that's a big thing when you get into coaching. you got to figure out, you know, you may love this, but if you guys can't do it, no point in doing it. you gotta find, <laughs> yeah. you got to find what works best for you guys. But right now, um, you know, we like to spill the ball, make it run sideline to sideline. Uh, and the biggest thing that we preach, even at least in my aspect, is we want to make them snap it again. Uh, it's very hard for any high school team, you know, even us included, to go down the field 14, 15 yard drives. If we can just eliminate the big plays, make them snap it again, um, it's it's huge. And if you look back at the state championship game, that Colazzo kid from Aurora, one of the first drives, he takes it almost to the house. Seth Lempen makes a tackle. We end up they end up throwing a pick in the in the red zone. That's it's a different ball game if that kid scores there. So it's yeah. huge. Yeah. No, I mean, that's that, you know, I, because of all the different things they do too, they present a lot of issues. Yes. And you knew early in the season that was a 11 point different game. And that was the, one of the biggest games in Class B last year. Yeah. And I mean, so you sit there, you go in the game, you got to worry when you see that kid going down the sideline, you go, here we go again. It's yeah. going to be another wild one. And yep. uh, so what kind of enters your mind with all that? Because I mean, they're a good football team and they can score any time too. So defensively, what do you look at? to slow somebody like that down that's very good offensively and then scored 44 the time before. I think you got to be great tacklers. Um, you got to tell the kids that um, the first guy is probably not going to bring him down. we got to get 11 to the ball, and I know it's a simple concept, but it's harder than it looks. A lot of kids um, yeah. just watching, they don't, they don't really understand that, but um, the first guy doesn't always make it, so you get to 11. It's hard for a guy to get away from 11 players. Yes, so. it is. So yes, if you can is. get that bot into him, um, it's good stuff. Well, we're, I'm going to say uh, we're going to go to our next segment here. But first of all, I want to thank Sideline Power and Sports Boards for being captains of uh, this program and being good sponsors. And uh, just to talk a little bit about what you, because uh, you are one of our customers, you have our end zone tower and, and our coach bad. So I know you just got the coach bad, but I know you're the one that's going to be using a lot. So can yeah. I expound on that a little bit, Coach? Uh, yeah, so the coach pad um, was really excited when we first saw it over there at the, the clinic in Ashland. Um, just for the sake of um, run, I run the scout team on both sides. Uh, I think so flipping through cards on a daily basis, it's, it <laughs> creates hassle and everything. You get the weather, all that kind of stuff. So yeah. when I saw this, I uh, saw what it could do. I was just, we got to have it. Um, you know, and we've used it a couple times here and there. It's a tremendous uh, device so far, and I just can't wait to actually get in season where we're going to use it daily. Mm -hmm. so. And the end zone turn, you've had that for a few years now. Yes, we have. Yeah, we've had good luck with that. Um, yeah, it's, it does what it needs to do. It's perfect. Hi, my name is Brett Davis. I'm the Vice President of Support and Sales at Sideline Power, and welcome to our reconditioning center. The process of reconditioning headsets is we get the system in, uh, we clean it up, we test it out, we find uh, where the weaknesses or where the issues of concern are for the coach, identifying those issues of concern, going through and replacing mic booms, 
replacing ear sets um, and other pieces that might need to be fixed or replaced. In a, in a given year, Sideline Power will go through and recondition anywhere from five to 10,000 headsets. We might get you know, 250, 300 systems that are in um, during the course of a typical year, so we keep really busy during the reconditioning warehouse. In terms of reconditioning headsets, we've had great feedback um, from coaches across the country that send them in. We have coaches that every year you know, are sending their headsets into us on an annual basis. We get calls on a Monday you know, about a system after a game on Friday night. We make sure that next Friday that, that they're taken care of. You know, the coaches are our number one priority and we'll do whatever we can to make sure that those coaches are taken care of on Friday night. Sideline Power is a one-stop shop for coaches. We're here to make life easy for coaches. They have enough to worry about, you know, whether it's the X's and O's, player development and so forth. So when it comes to technology, let us take care of that for you. From headsets to end zone cameras to sound systems, we're here to make your life easy. And I'm Brett with Sideline Power. Stay powered up. Okay, kind of just draw up your base offense and your base defense, Coach, since you kind of work with both. So you're a basic cover three team then, are you? I would, yeah. Do you, do you get much to cover four at all? We, it, you know, what we do, and this is what I love about it, we check into a lot of things. So what the offense gives us. This is your pre-snap. This is pre-snap, but we want to try to give the look every time um, and then adjust as it goes. So. What are the, when you look at that, what are the things that you fear the most as a defensive coach when, in this front? What people will try to do to hurt you? What are Albert. the all verts, They're those seams wide open. <laughs> if we stay in our base three, yeah, these weak spots right here, that's what I fear the most. Yeah. I was um, going to say that myself. Yes. Run game wise, what do you fear? Fear. Uh, you know, I think we're. I feel very sound in the run game here. The RPO stuff is the, the stuff that you know we People gotta are really it. coach up if someone's good at RPO and that kind of stuff. That would what I would say. And more of for not the running game. I feel we can we can take care of the run. It's that slinging it out. Um, and especially the vertical routes run, people run slant behind it, that kind of stuff. Gotcha, yep. gotcha. So. Do you so do you do you blitz out of this that much? Do you do you get to some one and zero out of this, or do you stay pretty much? Uh, it just depends game plan wise. I know we uh, last year we brought pressure here and there. Uh, and my thought is always though, if we can stay in base and make it look like we're blitzing, just because of how fast we're playing, uh, that's to me is the best stuff. <laughs> so um, you know, we we preach a lot of reads, read and react, um, coach it up that way. So good stuff there. Now, how do you try to, because I know you see a ton of it now, you see it in college, you see it in the NFL. Yeah. What do you do to, with this to, to stop the RPO? What is your plan when you go into a game? How do you going to try to stop that type of so action? So RPO, in my opinion, is you got to figure out who do you want to have the ball. Do you want the quarterback, running back, or do you want the receiver to have the ball? Who's going to be the least defensive? Uh, right now, most times, to me, I want the running back. He's got the farthest away from the line of scrimmage, um, and especially if they got a quarterback who can really truly read it. Uh, that's who I want to have the ball first. So if that's the case, the biggest thing we got to figure out is, okay, who are they reading? And then we're going to make him tell the running quarterback what to do. You know, and that's and that's where we would start from. How do you do that? So let's just say, like, Give for me a us. basic. Yeah, so for us, we run inside zone, mm -hmm. all right? And so they're going to key this guy. Right. Um, and so this guy, quarterback's going to put his eyes on this DN right here. Mm -hmm. If we want this guy to get the ball, he's just going to sit there. That's his read. That's okay. his key. If he sits... He should give, and then hopefully I got one, two, three, four, five. These guys all, that should be able to tackle ball. The reason why I don't circle this guy is he has to step away because he's got quarterback. If he were to pull it, do something right. goofy like that. Right. This guy is who's the guy to really put on that, and this guy's got to be a player for us. Um, and you know He's got to have instinct for it, but um, that, that's what I'd say. You're going to make it, try to force him to get that ball, ball every time. Yep, yep. I see. Okay. Watching somebody, someone one time told me that the, the best play is a run play because it's, like I said, the farthest away from line scrimmage to get going down. So they throw this stuff behind here. Now you got to hope that, gosh, this guy, this guy makes a tackle or this guy coming up. Yeah. Hard to do. So because that's the first thing you, yeah. if you occupy him and try to get to him, yeah. Yeah. What type of, uh, is, is three your main coverage or do you get it? What is your, what do you consider after post snap read? What is your main coverage? I said it's really just dependent on what, what they do as an offense. But uh, three, four, three and four, I would say, was what we would So it's say. about even down that time? Straight, yeah. A lot of teams are pretty balanced. We don't see a lot of teams that do uh, like a three by one or a one by three sets. So I would say three and four is pretty. pretty you don't straight. see that much three by one? Not very many. You know, Northwest had a little bit at the beginning of the year last year, um, but then not till like gross. And I may miss some in the middle. Blair, I know, does a little bit of it. Uh, but we can check and do a little. Um, you know, like 
cover four on one side, cover two on the back. Right, the back, so. like a lot of people yes. do when they rotate yep. over there. Yep. Yeah. So. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. What? What? Uh, let me ask you this: What are your drop your three favorite running plays from the offensive side? No, you don't call it, but running you got to have your three oh, favorite. Three, I, everything's read. It's power reads, counter read, zone read, all everything read because I love the RPO stuff. I think if you got I do too. I like the RPO yeah, too. If you got a dude that can do it. It's good stuff. But I'll, I said my favorite probably is the power read here, reading that play side D end, um, and then throwing just a quick out with the. That's with the receiver, receiver right there, yep, there. yep, yep. and he's read. he's driving off. Yep, yep, yep. So drive him off there, but uh, read this guy. If he sits, we're giving and just gutting it because we got this guard wrapping to right there. Uh, we're yeah. pull and quarterback, he's got decision. Throw it out and run, get up field and run. And now your puts, main read is and it puts one once again. It puts this guy, whoever their outside linebacker is, in a bind. If the safety's playing real high, this is a quick throw. Makes it yeah. easy. And you're still reading the end, right? Yep, reading the end. I, I see. I see teams do that, and I like that play. I mean, I mean, it's one I'd, if I was still doing, I'd coach today. I'd put in, yeah. just because I think it puts a lot of pressure right here, and you're getting that corner out of there. And I mean, if that end closes, you pop it. Yep. Yeah. And if, and and some, if they want to play palms coverage, they want to sit that corner right there. This guy's vertical. You're telling me, a, and the safety's got to get his butt all the way over there. Nope. You're putting a lot of a lot of responsibility on that linebacker right there, yes, that invert guy. So uh, we were just talking defensively before. <laughs> that guy's got to be a dude for that team. Yeah, I mean, so. if he's not, then he's got a lot of ground to cover. And exactly. Buying us, you know, when you see that run fake too, you hope that holds him. Yeah. Is what I always think as an offensive guy, enough yep. to where he can get that break and get out on it. Yep. You know, so you put putting that guy in there because if he just decides to run with him and he give you give it and he breaks it. There's no help there. Nope. Because a lot of times those up front guys, the middle linebackers, get clogged up in there yeah, that, and get washed. Where that's you need that key. outside backer to sift in there and make a tackle once yep, in a while. For sure. Okay, I like that. What are you? What is your favorite pass play Ooh, that you guys pass. felt the most successful last year through your season? That you're not doing um, drop this something new. So everybody's seen it when they showed up Saturday. You know you got to stop <laughs> this pass when you play Bennington. Uh, like I said we had a lot of success. Um, just. Player in one side when you got a Caden Bloom um, who uh, can run a very easy eight and just single covers that side, get those safety to go over, hold the safety, throw the eight. On I the saw you side. do that, yeah. Yeah, that's that's good stuff. Um, you know, the one Coach Bird, uh, he really loves his 8x dig eight. So get this guy shallow, this guy digging across. Yeah. Um, <laughs> these aren't open here. Yeah. One of those two. Yeah, have so, them sit in the coverage. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so. I mean, I, I think a lot of people, I, we ran that at Dan when I was there, just before you went to Doan, uh -huh. and that was one of our best, I mean, it really was. Yep. Just you got some, time. And, and that's the whole yeah. key. If you're done running for your life, it, <laughs> you're going to be throwing this a lot, thinking yes. take that away. Yep, but yeah. For sure. No, I mean, I just, I, I think that puts a lot of, especially if you're a, a palms or quarters coverage team, this puts a lot of pressure on you. Yep. And I like that. What is uh, What do you do to, let's say team blitzes a lot. Yeah. Do you, do you hot it or do you... Do you uh, do you protect it, or do you do both? I think uh, I would say we would hot it first, find the guy. There's one guy that's going to be able. You're going to bring that pressure. There's a guy. Quarterback has to take into account who that is, figure out who it is, and then and I would say we hot it, get out to the running back. You know, like I said, when we got Dylan Mossick in the backfield, you just flick him ball, let him do, do what he so, needs. So somebody's going to make a tackle, exactly. don't they? Exactly. So. Do you have Culver a? was a really good one. He'll be our running back this year. He was he's, he's coming back. Yeah, he's he was a junior. He's another kid. You just get him in space. All you got to do is give him the ball in space. So, what is your favorite? What is your favorite blitz? Being an ex-defensive guy oh, and a coach, boy. that you uh, like that you just now you like is, to call in a hot time, and if it's really important that nobody's seen it on film, don't show it. But now this, uh, this I can show this perfectly because we don't run a three front anymore. But my absolute favorite blitz. This is my favorite blitz when we ran it uh, at Doan. Mm -hmm. I took this straight from Doan. Yeah, because you ran the three uh, man we ran front. Three man front. Um, but uh, so we would run it out of a three five um, right here. But we would. We call it Nasty Wham. So, yeah, nasty <laughs> I like that wham, name so already. Nasty, uh, takes that nose going this way, ends out here. This will's going to knife under the guard, Ooh. and the mic's going to wrap around. See, I or tell you what, go I. Four on, four on three. If it hit it quick enough. If we can get this guard to just, even for a little bit, that mic's coming free. That's in, whether you're in a four man front or an odd front. Uh -huh. the, the crossing blitz yeah. is the worst blitz to pick up. No matter what level, yes. you see NFL teams let that guy go free. You see college, your best, your BCS, high school. That is the being an ex-offensive guy. I hate that blitz. Yes, because yep. it's so hard. You usually get the first guy, and then the second guy cuts free. If yep. you do get, if you miss the first guy, 
I mean, it's just hard. Yep, and, I, and like I said, these guys just know it's, I'm taking this guy. I'm going to occupy him. Right. And, when, and what do you do if this guy's running straight at you? It's to tell you gotta, him to try to scrape off or do something differently. Yeah, yeah. Makes this guard very, put him in a bind. Oh, I know, and it's so, you, people don't realize how hard it is to come over and help there. Yes. Yep. No, I hate that. And it's a, it's a very effective blitz out of a four-man flying. Yep. You know, I really do. I just, I, I hate that one. All right. What, uh, let me, let me ask you one more question here. Yeah, of course. What do you, defensively, do you see much unbalance and what do you, how do you adjust to an unbalance, um, unbalanced alignment? Cause I, I used to try to do that to people too, to kind of throw them off. Yeah. And hopefully they wouldn't shift and rotate and try to sneak somebody out. I just wonder how, what you guys knew down days. You know, we saw a lot of unbalance on the Fairbury, um, Fall City, uh -huh. uh, if you've ever seen their offense, uh, kind mm. of a goofy offense today on balance. That biggest thing that high school kids need to remember, that tied in on the backside, he was eligible. And right, and that's what kids. you hope people forget yeah. that. Yeah, exactly. Um, but what we do is just we'd make that guard right to the center, the new center, right. um, and try to adjust from there. Uh, we would sometimes, uh, what we got to end up doing there was we would put, uh, let's see, if they got center, guard, tight end. I'd actually bring a linebacker down here mm -hmm. and have him, in a sense, man him up. Uh, just to take that threat away and um, just let him know he, he ain't leaving a lot of scrimmage there. Uh, w this year, we, I, I can't remember if we saw much imbalance there. I know we had a heavy set, um, and Elkhorn doing what they do. With they the they, they like it, don't so they? we would shift a little bit with right. them to get it. It wasn't that necessarily unbalanced, uh, but something he, that we That goes back to the, the he, previous yeah. head coach because he loves that stuff. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, just I think you just got to adjust a little bit and under, let the kids understand that uh, there's – Certain people that are eligible, certain people, people aren't. aren't. And you need to know yes. which one's who. Because that's, exactly. gets, I mean, you see that breakdown, same thing in the NFL. So, I mean, if when you can watch film and go yep. through stuff 24-7, yep. then make mistakes, it, it's easy to happen in high school or college. Exactly. So, I appreciate that, Coach. Good knowledge today. Um, we're going to wrap it up here. I want to thank you so much for coming out today. Of course. You're an honor. I, mean, I appreciate wish it. you a ton of luck next year. You, thank you. You were the talk of Omaha last year, I can tell you that, amongst wow. all the sports people and everything like that. So, well, we appreciate state. that. And those, kids, those kids deserve it. They did. They and being did. an ex-Tiger, that's pretty good. <laughs> be, be, you know, being the G-Pack, you kind of, yes. because Don and Dan went back a long ways yeah. and Midland and all you guys. So, yep. that's cool. Yep. Do you ever watch pro wrestling? Pro, no. I used to do that. Put your hand like this. You ready? Go ahead, Coach. You want? You should be an ex-defense, but you want food and money. And all you say, hush, hush, hush. Thank you, Coach. Appreciate you your time, brother. You bet.